money from around the world has been flowing into the U.S. Okay. Most of the reasons it's safer here, you get more return here, better economy, more insulated from some of the problems elsewhere, and it's made the dollar go to 20-year highs. Okay. Against, against other currencies, the yen, the euro, the British pound. And gold and silver tend to trade inversely to the dollar. Are you tired of trying to keep ahead in the rat race, only to have so much of your hard-earned money going to the tax collector? Equity doesn't pay the bills. Retirement savings don't pay you now, and there are only 24 hours in a day to work. The only solution is passive income that pays you 24-7 now not 40 years from now. From vetted investment opportunities to tax saving strategies, let John guide you through all the confusion and take control of your financial life in pursuit of financial freedom. So sit back, relax, and welcome to the Wealth and Freedom Nexus. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're listening to this. This is John Richtarn, your host, as always, of the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And be sure to follow me on my social media channels at W Freedom Nexus. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, where I'm constantly sharing little nuggets of information, be it you know tax saving tips, possibly even promos. You know, invest one hundred dollars in this platform, get fifty dollars free, and the like. Now, this episode today, I actually have a returning guest on again, Dana Samuelson of Amerigold. And Dana last joined us way, way back at episode five, which is interesting. We're hard to believe we're in the episode 50s now. This is uh, his previous appearance was back in late 2021. Uh, great guy. I met him at the uh, Real Estate Guys Summit on Sand back in June of 2021. have done business with him and his company. I'm actually looking to uh, buy some more silver from them as well. Currently just waiting for another another investment to divest and uh, liquidate, hopefully by the end of the month of this recording. So, and once that comes in, I'm always a believer in the uh, velocity of money, you know, once investment terms or uh, liquidates or whatever the case may be, just moving that money, not just having it sit idle in a bank account that's constantly losing money to inflation. Now, my this is just my personal belief. I, you know, just want to throw this out there. I am not an investment advisor. I am not a, you know, CPFP or anything like that. This is just my personal opinion opinion that anytime silver is under uh, $20, gold is under $2,000, and Bitcoin, I'm going to throw in there, is under $20,000. My personal belief, I think that's uh, a buying opportunity. And at the time of this recording, and for what we've seen a lot in 2022, we've seen the those three assets under those particular benchmarks. So I myself have invested a little bit more. I you know haven't purchased any real estate. Actually, I made a small purchase in February of this year through uh, Paraguay Ag Invest that you can catch on weeks ago that I had David Smith on. So you know the real estate market has been a little hot. I think the crypto and precious metals are undervalued. So again, I'm not an advisor. I you know, personally just think this is a buying opportunity. And this is also what I'm doing as well in my personal life and my personal financial life. Now, with this episode that I had Dana on, we talked a little bit about gold and silver, but also more holistically, you know, a little bit on, you know, macroeconomics, a big picture, so to speak, and how those precious metals can get impacted by, obviously, the inflation we've been seeing in 2022. If you, if you think it's bad here in the uh, United States, uh, just Google Argentina. They've had about 90% inflation year to date. So just think of something you bought for $10 in January of now cost $20. So I don't know if Argentina is going to be the next Venezuela or next Zimbabwe or next Weimar Republic, but I don't know. That country's always seen to have some issues. I swear they seem to default on their debt about every 
20, 25 years, which is even more hysterical than I think in 2021 or 2020, I can't remember. They released 100-year bonds in Argentina. You could buy a bond from Argentina, and they will pay you interest for the next 100 years. You know, just completely ignore that we've defaulted on debt so many times, and statistically, they'll default long before that 100 years is up. But uh, I don't know. I Every time I think I hear of a crazy investment, you know, one just seems to one-up the craziness, so to speak. But, you know, regardless, you know, I'd make that as a joke. It's, you know, unfortunately very serious for Argentinians as, you know, the peso has definitely just plummeted in value due to inflation and a lot of government mismanagement. But I just bring that up for, you know, comparative purposes. Yes, seven, eight, nine percent inflation, you know, depending on when you're listening to this here in the United States, you know, is not fun. But, you know, there are ways to, you know, mitigate that and even benefit from inflation. You know, again, if you haven't checked out episode 32 with the Bronson Hill, I highly encourage that because we really talked in depth of how you could be on the winning side of inflation and can actually benefit from inflation if you're set up properly. With that, you know, Dana and I talked about all the geopolitical events, you know, obviously with the Ukraine war, you know, unfortunately going on with Russia and how precious metal holders could really benefit from rising rates, inflation, as well as all the you know, turmoil, so to speak, as we're seeing in the world. And it could very well mimic what happened in the late 70s to early 80s with, you know, inflation, stagflation, rising rates, and, you know, commensurate the, you know, huge boom in gold price and silver, which actually still to date, I think it was 1981, I believe, in inflation adjusted dollar terms. Gold has still never hit that peak from back in 1981, which I, off the top of my head, I think it was around seven, eight hundred dollars an ounce then. Inflation adjusted here in 2022, that would equate to about twenty five, twenty six hundred dollars an ounce. I, you know, kind of going off the top of my head, I might actually research that and put that in the show notes by the time this publishes. But you know, you know, 80s aside, inflation aside, rising rates, you know, I might be looking up in your, you know, gold app or a Comex or you know, just a regular stock app and Notice that gold and silver are both down since Dana was last on, and we've had you know inflation and rising rates, and with inflation at you know eight to nine percent, you know, in the last several months, shouldn't those be up? And actually, the really answer, or really the answer is yes, precious metals are down, but they're up in some ways as well. And it's all in how you measure it. That's just one little teaser I'm going to give. You'll have to listen in today's episode. Uh, once you hear it, I even have to hit rewind and listen to it again. But really, it's actually pretty simple when you think about it as to how an asset can be up and down at the same time. And now while gold is always usually in the news, you know, you have to watch CNBC, you usually see the stock tickers go through, as well as what, you know, oil's trading at, what the 10-year treasury rate is at. Silver doesn't get as much, you know, mainstream news or mainstream attention could really see a run up in the next, I'd say five to 10 years, not only due to inflationary pressures, but due to industrial needs for the metal. Silver has a lot of industrial uses from dental to the green energy that we're starting to see with the Biden administration pushing, you know, everything from solar panels to EVs. And that'll take silver. So the Build Back Better Bill version two masquerading as the new Inflation Reduction Act or whatever they uh, named it now that just passed uh, not too long ago, will have a little or quite a lot of indirect subsidies and tax breaks for silver and possibly in some additional ways you didn't know of. Uh, finally, I also learned about some additional storage options available that I didn't know about until I uh, spoke with Dana on this. So uh, kind of went off a little bit on off topic a little bit. And, you know, just as much as I enjoy sharing the knowledge that I've learned over the last eight years of my financial journey with others, every time that I hit that record button, I have a guest on, I learned something as well. So it's just as beneficial to me as I hope it is beneficial to all my listeners out there. So I personally use TDS and Silver Bullion. You can find those in the show notes as well. But I myself will probably look at some of these other storage options as well, uh, just for you know, safety, security, and privacy. So with that, I've talked long enough here. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. Learn something new and as always take action to pursue pursue your wealth and freedom. Now a word from this week's sponsors. Buying rental homes are one thing, but buying older homes could bring more headaches for a new real estate investor. Outdated wiring, 
cracking foundations, and hazardous materials like asbestos are not things a beginning investor should have to deal with nor worry about. Why not start with a brand new construction home in one of the fastest growing areas in the U.S., Central Florida? Wagner and Alaska and his team, Build to Rent, have over 3,000 homes in various stages of development and work only with real estate investors. Their new homes feature tenant resilient amenities like vinyl floor plank, lower insurance premiums than older homes, and possibly even very low property taxes for the first year or two. To find out more and learn how this is all possible, go to buildtorentdirect.com or text 407-927-5074. That's build the number two rentdirect.com. Hey, Dana, thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, John, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, thanks for, again for coming on. Now, uh, let me just look at my notes. You were back, you were last on uh, episode five that uh, aired on November 17th, 2021. So eh, about 10 months ago. And at that time, and yes, I was bored. So I looked up that day. Gold closed at $1,866.72 and silver at $19.82. Now, since you're on, you know, we've heard the news. Real estate is up. Uh, inflation is up, uh, but it's down uh, only 8.3% as of the last uh, report. Uh, but, you know, we've been seeing these double-digit increases in real estate and hard assets. Inflation's up. Uh, interest rates are up, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, uh, actually, just look at right now, uh, gold is trading at about 1700 and silver has been pretty much flat. So kind of what gives? I mean, shouldn't they be great inflation hedges? Shouldn't they be up just as much as real estate and others? Well, uh, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a topsy-turvy world. You know, a few, a few things have happened over the last... Uh, nine months since we talked last. One of them was uh, a little conflict in Eastern Europe called the war in Ukraine. Makes sense, yeah. Which uh, basically took inflation that was already percolating and amplified it quite a bit, uh, primarily through energy shocks and, yeah. through, and through food um, supply interruptions and crop interruptions also that are going to persist into next year because uh, the Ukraine and Russia both produce a lot of fertilizer. Yep. And uh, it's impacting farmers here in the U.S. Uh, because they can't get enough fertilizer. Right. And of course, you know, the harvest in Ukraine, which is a bread basket, has mm -hmm. been interrupted to a degree by the Ukrainian war. Uh, and, you know, they've got basically all of last year's harvest pretty much still in silos okay but they can't get that grain out of the ukraine which they have been doing in the last month or two via ships okay uh, they can't they don't have anywhere to put this year's harvest whatever it will be they don't have any place to store it so inflation is going to persist um and yes uh gold is underperforming okay but it's not underperforming in the same way other assets are because it's a topsy-turvy world right now. The biggest issue is that there's an interest rate differential of significance between the U.S. and the rest of the world, with the Fed raising rates first and faster than other governments around the world. Okay. So what we have seen is the, the yield you would get, say, on a U.S. Treasury, 10-year. Uh, Let's talk about a 10-year has gone from about 1.8% to 3.75% over, okay. over the last nine months since sure. last month. That's double. Okay, mm. so now until the last two weeks, the British 10-year, uh, the German 10-year were well under that by more than a point. Now, okay. the, now we're seeing central banks around the world starting to play catch-up. Okay. Uh, with... Uh, the Central Bank of Canada and the ECB both raised rates three quarters of a point just in the last uh, week or two. Okay. Which has narrowed the interest rate differential a bit. The U.S. is still paying more. But what's really happened is the U.S. economy has been doing better than okay. other countries. China is weak. They're actually in some trouble with their housing market because of uh, the way they finance housing. <laughs> yep. Uh, you may be aware of that. Well, when they locked down half the country to get to a mythical zero COVID, you know, it has repercussions. 
Yeah, so COVID is another big problem, the COVID lockdown. So China's well underperforming. Japan, you know, their interest rates 0.25%. They're woefully under everybody else. Okay. Uh, Europe is going through uh, sharper inflation than we are right now. Hmm. Uh, they catch up on inflation that's higher. So they're underperforming. Uh, they've got a real energy shock in progress with the Russian gas interruptions, especially for Germany. Okay. Okay. Gas prices, you know, gone up eight or ten times. Wow, it was a year ago. So what all this means is money from around the world has been flowing into the U.S. Okay, those are the reasons it's safer here. You get more return here, better economy, more insulated from some of the problems elsewhere, and it's made the dollar go to twenty-year highs. Okay, against, against other currencies, the yen, the euro, the British pound. And gold and silver tend to trade inversely to the dollar. So okay. if the dollar is strong, it pressures gold and pushes it down. Why is that? Well, gold is a commodity. It's priced in dollars around the world, like a lot of commodities are. Mm -hmm. And most of the world buys gold. The U.S. does not buy near as much gold as Europe does, which buys gold at about twice or three times the rate we do here. And mm. in Asia, it's four to six times the rate we buy it here. So okay. when the dollar gets strong, it makes gold more expensive in other currencies. Okay, interesting. Comes down demand. Plus, with inflation, we're seeing people buying less all of a sudden. Okay. The money doesn't go as far. When you have 9% inflation, it's like everybody got a 9% pay cut this year. Yeah. What their earnings were. Now, wages are up, but not as much as um, the inflation rate. So mm -hmm. even if people are making some more money, uh, they're still losing to inflation. So okay. gold is underperforming primarily because the dollar has been abnormally strong. Interesting. Okay. And so I suppose even taking that maybe to an extreme level, you know, like I said, since we last were, you were last on in dollar terms, gold is down, but if you, I don't know, let's just say benchmarked it to the Venezuelan Boulevard, which God knows where their inflation rate is at right now. You're probably sitting pretty well in that kind of regard. <laughs> right, right. So gold is actually up about 8%. It's down about uh, 8% in dollars since we talked last time. Okay. Right. Silver's down about 2%. Yeah. Uh, but in Chinese yuan or Japanese yen or euros or uh, British pounds, it's up. Gotcha. Right? Four, to, four to eight or 10%. Indian rupees, it's up. Canadian dollars, it's up. So it is performing in countries that are losing more mm. than the U.S. is right now, just because of the currency value. Okay. Uh, now, this is the dollar measured against other currencies. When you measure the dollar against commodities, the dollar is losing ground because oil's up mm. about 50%. Right. $50, $60 a barrel to $90 or $100. You know, electricity's up. Uh, everything that we buy that we need is higher in price. Food's up. Mm -hmm. and we've got the latest numbers. Uh, we just got a new CPI print today at eight and a half percent. The third month that we've had, you know, pretty high inflation. Right. And, um, you know, the Fed has pretty much baked into the cake now, uh, another three quarter point rate hike in just next week, which would be the third week of September. Okay. I'm not sure when this will broadcast. It might be a little after that, but, you know, it's hammering the stock market because the mm -hmm. equities markets don't like higher financing costs. So right. oh, it's down about 12% since we talked last. Mm -hmm. uh, the s and is down about 15%. Um, you know, the British pound, 12%. Wow. The yen, yen's down about 20%. The euro's <laughs> down 13%. Uh, so gold is actually holding up pretty well considering, you know, what other assets classes are doing. Okay. And it's just underpriced in dollars right now because the dollar is overvalued. Okay. So a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it comes down to, you know, what's the asset, commodity, investment, whatever, and how are you measuring it? I mean, at the end of the day, an ounce of gold from last year is still an ounce of gold, but if you're measuring it against pick your currency, it could be up, down, or sideways. Right, right. So um, gold is is pretty steady. You know, uh, crypto, I didn't look at and see what 
No, it's done, but it's got hanging like, around twenty grand or twenty thousand yeah. now, yeah. So, but a year ago it was thirty five or something. So yeah, but yeah, I think uh, Bitcoin peaked uh, about sixty, sixty five. I can't remember. Uh, right. It was actually right around the time of the uh, twenty twenty one summit at Santa Belize, and right. that just kind of went downhill from there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's lost two thirds of its value. Oh, yeah. so it's a year and a half ago. Yeah. So metals are are. You know, holding value, uh, gold tends to climb a wall of worry, and we haven't quite gotten to the real scary phase of this whole cycle yet. Okay. And, and what what concerns me, um, let me back up a bit. One of the best inflation hedges there is. If you if you Google what performs best in inflation, it's real estate's number one. Yep. Everybody that's positioned in real estate's doing well. Yep, exactly. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Sure. Uh, Commodities are second. Okay. Precious metals are third. Okay. That's how it worked during the 70s, during the last inflationary bout that we had. So okay. Tangible assets are all good to have. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of, we're all like parsing what's inflation going to be next week? What's next <laughs> month? Right. What's the price of gasoline doing? This is where it matters for real estate. The cost of shelter is about 30% of the consumer price index, mm. or about a third. Yeah. Okay. It lags because of rent uh, increases and lease renewals. Mm. So the rent may actually go up, but you may not see that reflected in actual rent rolls. Sure. So a lease is renewed, and that could be six months from now. It could be a year from now. Mm -hmm. And you know, year on year, rents are up about 6.2% as of this month. Now, we've seen oil, we've seen gasoline come down 10% month on month. Mm -hmm. But year on year, rents are up 6.2%, while food's up 11%, electricity's up 14%. But at a third of the CPI, and with a lag effect, and a pretty steady market, Rent inflation is going to continue to be high, mm -hmm. probably for a year to two years. Yep. And it's not going to be volatile. Mm -hmm. So that's really what's going to keep inflation higher than most people think it will be when they look at the price of a gallon of gasoline. Sure. Okay. So inflation is going to be really hard for the Fed to contain now. They've they've completely made a couple policy errors. Yeah. Uh, they kept rates too low, too long. Mm -hmm. They overstimulated. Now they're behind the curve, reacting too too much, too fa uh, too slow, but too quickly probably. Yeah. And we're in a global. This is where I get a little worried about the next six months. We're in a global economic slowdown, mm -hmm. and central already, and central banks are all tightening into a real slowdown. Yep. This is a recipe for a bit of a train wreck at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And I think the equities markets in the U.S. are particularly vulnerable. Agreed. Today, yeah. you know, this morning, you know, the Dow's been on a bit of a rebound the last couple of trading sessions, up about four or 500 points. And it was supposed to be up 200 this morning, but then this hotter CPI print yep. <laughs> it went down 800 points. Exactly. Yeah. Still air in that market. And I think, you know, the Dow is particularly vulnerable. Uh GDP for this quarter is going to be about a point and a half, yeah. depending upon how much the trade imbalance affects it. You know, we had two negative quarters of GDP already, primarily because we had trade imbalances that dragged the, the number down. Okay. While the economy was still performing, a, you know, okay, half a point to a point. But when you're not uh, exporting as much as you're importing, that is a negative effect on GDP. Right. So this quarter, we're probably going to see positive growth, but I think the fourth quarter this year and the first quarter of next year can be pretty rough. Are you tired of the roller coaster of the stock market? The S&P 500 just had its worst start to a year in over 50 years. The NASDAQ is down 25%. The Dow is in correction territory and past stock darlings like Netflix are down over 60% year to date. Why not invest in assets that provide constant cash flow and growth unrelated to the stock market? From private businesses to cryptocurrency, the options are nearly endless. I myself have invested in promissory notes, self-storage syndications, 
a Bitcoin mining fund, and even a tea parcel down in Nicaragua in my retirement accounts. IRAs, solo 401ks, even HSAs don't have to be constrained by traditional stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And that is why I trust Amanda Holbrook and a specialized trust team with my retirement accounts. Reach out to Amanda today, 505-514-0587, or go to specializedtrustcompany.com for a free consultation today. Yeah. And- yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. And I mean, no one has a crystal ball. Who knows what's all going to happen and who knows what the Fed's going to do. I still kind of have to chuckle that, in my opinion, a lot of this can be directed back to Janet Yellen, who pretty much did nothing during her entire term. But now that she's in charge of the Treasury, she's like, oh, I think I can dictate to other countries that they should have a 15 percent minimum tax. And, you know, I think we should track every transaction, uh, six hundred dollars or more uh, nationwide. It's like, how do you go from one extreme to the other? I just don't get it. But that's another topic. <laughs> right. Well, the Fed is pretty much acknowledged now, finally. Yeah. Al's, uh, um Jackson Hole speech and another one he gave just a couple of days ago that they are going to do as much as they can to fight inflation in a similar manner to what Paul Volcker did yep. back in the late 70s, which was to get the federal funds rate over the inflation rate. Yep. Which means if they were to do that today, they'd have to get the Fed funds rate to 9%. Mm-hmm. But they can't do that. The debt with 30 no. trillion debt, it's just going to explode our interest payment on our debt. Mm-hmm. It'll break a lot of things. You know, a exactly. strong dollar can break things in other currencies. Yeah. But too high of an interest rate in this country. So the real potential for gold to go a lot higher is if the Fed doesn't contain inflation. Okay. And then they are forced to ease. Sure. Because that could explode metals higher. And uh, with a strong dollar, gold and silver have actually been on sale the last couple months. Mm-hmm. And I think they're undervalued by quite a bit. Silver by 4 or $5 an ounce. Yeah, I would agree. Gold, Even maybe gold, more. <laughs> yeah, and gold by you know $100 an ounce. So I, mm-hmm. they're on sale right now. And it's pretty much just because of the strong dollar. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, taking a little step away, I mean, you know, obviously we talked about inflation, inflation hedging, and, you know, I could would even say maybe currency inflation. Uh, lately, I've been seeing a number of stories. Uh, and of course, I can't find the article right now, but I believe it was uh, JP Morgan or a hedge fund at JP Morgan or something like that. And very high level, I've seen these articles, you know, oh, so and so has. Uh, been charged with manipulating the price of gold, or I think there's one case in silver. And they obviously don't go into much detail, and maybe it's too down the rabbit hole for me to even understand. But to me, I look at it's like, how does one company, individual hedge fund, whatever, how exactly can they manipulate a globally traded uh, commodity like gold? Well, they can, and then they can't. Okay. <laughs> So the the markets are going to go where the markets ultimately want to go. Okay. What these manipulation uh, convictions actually have been is for spoofing. Okay. Where they front run trades in the futures market by placing large orders in the futures market. Mm. Say they have a say they have a buy price they want to make on gold or silver. Okay. And they want to push the price of gold and silver down so they can buy it a little cheaper. Okay. What they do is they then put a bunch of sell orders in mm. to make the market look like there's a top-heavy market, and that'll run the market down a little bit, and then they'll put their buy in. Okay. Right? And then they'll pull all the sell orders before they get executed. Mm. Or vice versa. If they want to put a sell order in, they'll put buy orders in to make the market look like it's stronger than it is. So they basically are front-running the market a bit to a- obtain um, a better price. Okay. or make a short-term market profit for themselves, but they're doing this, you know, in seconds, literally seconds. Mm -hmm. That's how long these trades take to, to spoof, to execute and get back out of. Right. You've got to be really nimble to do it. (laughs) Yeah. And have the technology and infrastructure, uh, supercomputers to do that as well. You know, probably no different than the stock markets. So (laughs) exactly. And, you know, there are, I can watch, there's a lot of algorithms that run the markets. And mm-hmm. I watch the precious metals markets. If I were to turn my computer screen over, I've got the futures markets up all day long. I watch them. Um, 
I can tell when the gold price is going to drop about five to 10 bucks because the price will drop. It'll come down. And it'll just kind of roll up a little bit. And right about here is where you want to sell. Okay. And it goes like this. It just drops five or $10 just like that. But you wow. got to be fast. You can see it coming. And the same thing on the way up, you'll see a, a dip and then a, it'll come up a little bit and go down a little bit, but not much. And then come back up again. Interesting. So, but these are like, I'm a genius for like five minutes. Sure. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how fast these things work. And the markets are small. They're not near as big as the, you know, stock markets or the currency markets or the bond markets. So right. big players can come in and bully the market around. Okay. And that happens. But ultimately, these markets always end up where they're supposed to be. You know, I remember when gold was $300 an ounce in 2000, being told the market was being manipulated and they're holding <laughs> the price down. Well, guess what? By 2011, they manipulated it all the way up to 1900. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> all right. These, yeah. these are short term things that, uh, you know, for you and me, they don't really affect us too much, but sure. they can have an influence in a very short period of time for a bit. Okay. No, well, that makes sense. Yeah. And since I'm not a, an institutional player that can sell billions of dollars of gold futures, I don't think I can, you know, have a dog in the fight, so to speak. So. Oh, no, me neither. Yeah. So. Uh, now, taking a little bit of a shift, as much as I like gold, there's, you know, maybe the you know, secondary precious metal, silver. And recently, we just passed the uh, build back better while inducing inflation version 3.0 or whatever it was officially named. And in that bill are, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, a lot of subsidiary or subsidies, uh, tax breaks, incentives, et cetera, for, you know, green energy, electric vehicles, uh, charging stations, solar panels, et cetera. And I don't think a lot of people really understand that, you know, you can't just wave a magic wand and out comes a Tesla battery. It takes rare earth metals like cobalt, but also silver, which I think, unlike gold, is a precious metal, but also has a lot of industrial use as well. With that in play, and obviously, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Do you see more of a gain in silver, not so much as a hedge, but just with the upcoming demand if you know, California succeeds in 2030, then all EVs are sold in there, no gas-powered vehicles and whatnot? Well, the industrial uses for silver and green energy are, are pretty good. Okay. So over time, that will have a fundamental impact on the metals price, primarily because you know, there aren't a lot of silver mines out there. Silver is usually a byproduct of other mining. Okay. I mean, there are gold mines, and they do find silver when they find gold. But sometimes they'll find silver with other mines. I'm not a mining expert, but there's sure. not a lot of big silver mines out there. So the supply will not be able to, to keep pace with demand if there's a steady incremental increase in demand, as there should be over the next 10 years, okay. due to the shift towards more green energy and more industrial use of silver. Gotcha. Now, right now, palladium is used in gasoline automobile catalytic converters mm -hmm. it's higher than the price of gold because it's about 40 times scarcer, but they need it for the, the, the gasoline catalytic converters. Right. Platinum is about 20 times scarcer than gold, um, but it's under the price of gold because okay. they need it for diesel catalytic converters. Hmm. And since the VW clean diesel <laughs> scale... <laughs> yep. Um, there has been a lot less need for platinum. So this is the kind of thing where you actually see it in the price today in those two metals, okay. where I think you will see it over time going forward it's with silver. But it'll, it, it'll be you know a, a slow burn. Sure. And, and it'll, but it'll buoy the price. And silver tends to be a bit more volatile than gold. If gold trades like this on an oscillation, silver will trade on a wider oscillation. Okay. And that's what we're seeing right now. It's oversold, you know, at about nineteen dollars an ounce, nineteen fifty. Mm -hmm. I think silver should be minimum twenty five dollars. Yeah. And relative to gold, you know, I I think it should be thirty or forty dollars with gold price at you know seventeen fifty today. Exactly. Yeah. Seventeen hundred. It was seventeen forty five yesterday. Yeah, I'm a big believer. Anytime silver is under twenty dollars, time to time to buy some more. So. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Now, uh, you know, maybe this kind of leads into the next segment here. Uh, if, if anyone out there, you know, maybe is looking at buying at silver or gold or, you know, I've thought about it and, yeah, I can see the benefits. And, I don't know, maybe they're just like, well, I live in a small studio apartment. I have no place to store this. Uh, I don't know where to get this. There's a lot of, uh, you know, shady characters on eBay from China that we talked about in back in episode five, yeah. and maybe they still want to have liquidity. Uh, you know, we had talked a little bit off camera that a lot of people don't know this, but capital gains usually are t- uh, capped at 20%, you know, stocks, real estate, et cetera. Bullion is one of the exceptions that's like 28% across the board for whatever reason. But let's just say, you know, one of my listeners, you know, I really want to have precious metals. I want to have liquidity. I don't want to have to sell it. I don't have a place or I don't feel comfortable storing it in my house. Uh, what options are there available or how would, or how could American Gold Exchange help? Well, we're a national mail order business, so we can help any of your, your listeners if they want to uh, deal with a reputable dealer. I've been doing mm-hmm. this for 42 years, have impeccable reputation and credentials. Uh you no, know, we've we've never not delivered and we've never bounced a check. All right. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Since we founded our company in 1998. Um, uh, so we're happy to help people with the most widely traded, competitively priced gold and silver bullion items there are. That's what our website, www.amergold dot com i've got to get a smaller head <laughs> no worries i'll have that in the show notes too <laughs> so um we'll help people if they want to buy physical metal now if you don't want to store it at home there's three or four vaults around the country that are uh, uh very user friendly okay uh, there's one in las vegas uh, it's called trans depository services there's another one in delaware called um uh, the delaware depository uh, there's one actually uh, in Texas called uh, the Texas Depository. Okay. Texas Bullion Depository. And these are places where you can store your metal. Uh, we actually have accounts with these facilities. Okay. So if you were to buy metal from us, we could ship it to your facility of choice for your account. They'll receive okay. it, put it under your name, you know, and you'll be billed for storage. And the storage is usually a, about a half a percent of value to 1% of value per year. And that's okay. primarily for insurance reasons. You know, as the mm. value of the metals goes up or down, the value of what is insured goes up or down. So they charge a percentage of value okay. um, to uh, make sure they have the proper insurance for in case they get robbed. Okay. It never happened. Um, when you want to sell... It's simply just call us and we can buy it from you. And then you just have the depository, take it out of your account and give it to us in our account. At the oh, same okay. Time. So you're liquid just like that. And then if we want to keep it there, we'll keep it there. If we want to have it sent to us, we'll have it sent to us. That's a real simple way to do it. Okay. Makes sense. And you, don't I just... have to, you don't have to worry about storage or, you know, any shipping, shipping metals. You know, we're professional shippers, but shipping back to us is a little bit cumbersome. People mm-hmm. do that. But it's you know it's a, you got to go through the post office to get proper insurance. That right, you can't get with FedEx or UPS like professional dealers like myself can. Sure, no it makes sense. So, and I think uh, I um you know back about a year ago, and there was another gentleman I met at the summit, and he he actually showed me on his phone he has a lot. Uh, more in gold and silver holdings than I do. But as I understand, with like TDS and some of these other depositories, let's just throw out, I don't know someone has $10,000 worth of bullion that they purchased from American gold exchange over the years. And maybe a great investment comes up and they're like, well, gee, you know, I don't want to sell. I get hit with the capital gains, uh, so on and so forth. They can actually kind of take a line of credit out, you know, say they have $10,000, maybe get a $5,000 line of credit, no banks involved, no credit check, et cetera, and then deploy that funds to, you know, whatever they want. And it's essentially secured by their holdings. So if they don't pay back, the depository essentially liquidates their holdings and takes them. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. So a lot of these places have their a side business, which is a financing business for metals. Okay. They'll, they'll loan against the metals. And it, you know, it only takes a couple of days to get the money because mm-hmm. they already have the collateral. You're sure. <laughs> They're storing it. They just take it from their shelf, your shelf, and put it onto their shelf or they 
attach a lien to it however they want to do it okay um, but yeah then you can get a loan to value normally of about 75 percent oh right so you might be able to get a little bit more but you know if you get a you could get a margin call for sure jobs, right uh the interest rates are usually prime plus a couple of points okay so it's not as competitive as a uh, you know you might get elsewhere mm -hmm. but you can get it fast right and I mean, there's you don't have to jump through hoops like you do trying to get a mortgage at a bank, which is going to take you twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bankers, when when things get tough, they get a lot tighter. Yeah, well, Thank especially you. like myself and a lot of listeners, you know, if you have a steady W two job, they see your paychecks. Hey, you're good to go. Oh, you're self employed. Even if you make millions of dollars, they're like, I oh, know business owners. That's a little risky. We got to get more, you know, blood samples and tax returns to <laughs> authorize your loans. So, as we've seen over the last twenty years, when things are really, you know, loose and and everybody's happy, banks will give loans to dead people. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> when things are tight. They won't give loans to anybody because yep. they, they're like silver when. They, they go feast or famine sometimes. So. Exactly. So, all right. That was, uh, uh, we wrap this up, Dana, and I know, you know, we've obviously talked about this with a lot of the geopolitical, you know, events in, you know, Europe, Ukraine, Russia, China, and obviously here in the United States where we're both at. Uh, do you have any, you know, predictions or what you see in the gold and silver or maybe just the precious metals market in general for 2023? Well, you know, we've had just an enormous increase in our debt over the last couple of years. We went from about 23 trillion in debt to 30 trillion in debt. We're going to mm -hmm. keep going up a trillion a year, even in the best of times. So the the purchasing power of the dollar is going to be naturally diluted. Um, and now we're going into a real, I think, troublesome phase. Okay. And inflation is already undercutting people's purchasing power and gold and silver are a pretty good way to hold purchasing power over time so okay. having a savings account instead of in dollars having some of your money in precious metals as a savings account Ooh. that you don't touch unless absolutely necessary is a good way to accumulate wealth over a longer period of time okay i do think that we could get into a phase in the next six months to a year where something breaks something material breaks uh, and I'm not talking about a company failing. I'm talking about a government defaulting on its debt mm -hmm. or a currency crisis uh, that, like we've seen a couple of times over the last 20 years when the dollar got too strong. Uh, what it does is it creates pressures in other currencies. So we had a uh, Mexico peso crisis. Yeah. Years ago, the dollar got too strong. We had the Asian flu in 1997 because the dollar got too strong against those currencies. We're mm -hmm. in another one of those phases. And what's really happening is, you know, if you look over the last five, six, seven years with interest rates at zero, that's life support. Yeah. That's life support for an economy, right? And the economies around the world had the interest rates set at zero. Mm -hmm. And now what's happened? The patients lying there on the table needing life support and inflation's come and pushed its blood pressure way up. Now, this is a bad analogy, but it's the best one we sure. have. <laughs> So, so the patient's on life support, and now his blood pressure is skyrocketed. So what does the doctor do? He takes the patient off of life support mm -hmm. by raising the rates. And yeah. this is this is potentially a situation for real financial trouble. And that's when gold and silver can really take off. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in the next six months or a year. It's sooner or later something's going to cause it to happen. I really think... The next six months to nine months could be really ripe for something like this to hurt. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting you had mentioned earlier too about Paul Volcker, and I still hear people from like, well, you know, if they crush inflation, and you know, so what if they raise the uh, Fed funds rates to what are fifteen percent, eighteen percent, twenty percent? We did that in the eighties, and we were fine. I'm like, well, yeah, but in the eighties we had one trillion in debt, and now we have thirty, thirty-three times that. So yeah. that I'll could be an issue. <laughs> Right. Our debt in the 70s was 30% of GDP. Yep. 130% of GDP. Mm -hmm. so let and me this is when the economy is arguably fairly strong, too. <laughs> right. So this is a silver quarter. I don't know if you can see it very well. Sure. Yep. Right. Now, this, this bought a gallon of gas in 1964. Mm -hmm. Four of them. Here's four of them. They equal a dollar. Yep. Today, this silver quarter will still buy a gallon of gas, and it equals about 
20 of these mm -hmm. an ounce of silver. So silver's purchasing power relative to the dollar just keeps going up. <laughs> yeah. Right? And that's the way you should look at precious metals over time. It's just a good way to store your money mm -hmm. outside of a currency that's going to continue to be debased by politicians that yep. don't care about your money. They care about getting reelected. Exactly. We're in a really uh, a debt-laden world, which is where the real Achilles heel is, this mm -hmm. cycle, which is why high high interest rates could really cripple things. Agreed. You know, if something breaks, watch out. Yep. Yeah. And like the Fed can conjure trillions of dollars of new currency, you know, in a matter of minutes, uh, thin air. Just like you said, there's not as many silver mines out there. We can't just wave a magic wand and here are 2,000 tons of gold that just hits the markets as well. So you can't build houses you know, mm -hmm. that fast. You can't get, you know, you can't get oil out of the ground that fast. You know, the commodities and tangible assets are really the place to be in this environment. And I think we're going to be in an inflationary environment for the next three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. This thing really calms down. And if they can't get it under control, we could go through a couple of waves like we did in the 70s. We had three big inflationary waves from 1965 to 1980. And the second wave was bigger than the first. And the third wave was much bigger than the second. And they were energy shock driven, which is mm -hmm. what's happening in Europe right now. Wow. Right? And here to a degree. Yeah. Well, in the 70s, I wasn't born yet, but I've read and <laughs> read a lot about the history. And yeah, with the between the Nixon shock to uh, uh, oil embargoes, it was definitely an interesting time from everyone I've talked to. So you got to have a little snow on the mountaintop. You know? <laughs> well, I'm getting that. I have a one year old now at the house, so I'll, I'll be getting there before before long. <laughs> so it'll happen faster now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So well, I wanted to thank you again, Dana, for uh, coming back on the show. As a final note, uh, if anyone's you know interested in learning more about you and your company, and maybe starting their uh, you know precious uh, precious metals holdings portfolio, uh, what's the best way to reach out to you and your company? So our website is www.amergold.com. Our general email box is info, I-N-F-O, at amergold.com. Our phone number is 800-613-9323. Now, we're, we're consultative in nature. We want to help people do the right thing by themselves for what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. We earn a lot of repeat business and a lot of referrals because we just treat people well, which is... Uh, not so hard to do in my business. We we have some high pressure outfits up there and some high you know high pricing out, outfits out there. Yep. So just by being nice to people and you know doing the right thing, it's it's really helped us out quite a bit. And that's really what we're trying to do is just help people because it helps us. Yeah. Simple as that. And then if uh, my math is right, and if I heard you correct, next year will be your 25th anniversary of being in business. Is that correct? Yeah, I started the American Gold Exchange in 1998 okay. when I got tired of working for other people. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's true. And uh, next year will be our 25th anniversary. All right. Well, congrats to congrats to your success. Uh, I'll actually, after we get off this, I'll be uh, placing another order through American Gold Exchange myself and uh, hope to continue that business relationship in the future. We'll help you however we can. And thanks for having me. It's been a real pleasure. You bet. Thanks a lot, Dana. Good luck with the baby. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Be sure to share, rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. For more updates, check out www.wealthandfreedomnexus.com. Remember, nothing on this show should be considered tax, legal, investment, or professional advice. This show is produced solely for educational and informational purposes. Please consult an appropriate and licensed tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for specific advice for your situation. For distribution or publication rights or media interviews, please contact the host.